now starting round four. That means we're at the halfway point of the first day, so to speak. Yep. Because we're going to play seven rounds today, three ro three more rounds tomorrow before yep. we're going to do a cut to the top 64. Yep. Right. Um, in this round, we're going to have Jason Little from the UK going up against Christoph Baumann from Germany. Yep. And... Um, one thing that makes this important, of course, or interesting, is because we featured Jason yesterday. Yeah, Jason and his dad um, were in a little pre-recorded segment that we did. I don't know if these guys have seen that already yet. Uh, um, I'm not 100% sure either, yeah. because we cannot watch the stream the entire time. We also <laughs> try and take a break in between matches. Yeah, so, but, um, yeah, so the... Um, in a nutshell, a it's basically you asking them about their... 10 year anniversary playing the game. Yeah, so they, you know, him and his dad started 10 years ago together. Just he came in the house one day and said, Can you teach me how to play Yu Gi Oh, please? And he said, Okay, uh, my son wants me to do this. I'm going to do it. And he learned how to play the game and then, you know, went from there, basically. <coughs> yeah, for the past 10 years. And still going strong. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are definitely enjoying the game. Yeah. And so um, like we said earlier, um, his, his dad, of course, making the quote of the weekend when we asked Chicken him about his, chips. his favorite combo. Chicken and chips. Yeah, so the, the interesting part about Jason right now is he's 100% undefeated. He's not, not just in matches. a single duel mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. entire time. We can maybe uh, quickly take a look at um, his opponents in those uh, past rounds. So maybe we can see what his, yeah. what his matchups were like. Yeah, so the app always says 2-1, but... Yeah, but yeah, it, it doesn't... Uh, distinguish between a 2-0 and a 2-1 victory. Yeah. So he did go up against uh, Markus Rosner in round one. That was yeah. an another ABC player. And then Nicholas Hewitt in round two from the UK. There we go. Um, yeah. <coughs> beat him, clean sweep, like we said. He was playing one of the many other decks because lots of players came with uh, decks that we maybe didn't expect in these large numbers or, or yeah. they just didn't feel like going with the, the big new deck, the ABC deck. And then another ABC deck in round three against Connor Dilworth and now he's going up against Christoph Baumann. Um, yeah. What's interesting here, of course, is uh, he's playing Magic Spectre. Um, yeah. A deck that has fallen out of fashion a little bit when you, when you compare it to yep. its initial high. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, definitely. I think it's one of the better kind of one or two pendulum decks that we're seeing at the moment. So right. Like Metal Foes and Magic Spectres, and then there's kind of like a standard -y version of pendulum. Uh, what has uh, changed for this deck? Why is it not as popular as it used to be? Um, mm. I think it's just generally pendulums are just kind of falling out of favor. They don't, they, they um, never really had that. Dominant you know, ma ma position? Magis yeah, Magic Spectres never really had that really great thing that, it, um, that, that made them super great that's why there was more kind of a mix of uh, yeah. yeah like the performer pal engine uh, and the odd eyes engine uh, but it now they have and i i don't know this it's in german i assume he has ties of brethren somewhere in here um that is a uh, bruder shafts something like that I, I remember that um i don't see it in the main deck at least <laughs> okay, well, so the big thing that people have been using um, in the Magic Spectre deck is Ties of Brethren. Right. Uh, so whether he's playing that or not, I don't know, but it'd be interesting to see, uh, see either him. way. Yeah. Well, it's it's definitely going to be an interesting match. Um, yeah. It's working for him at the moment. Yeah, so <laughs> so far so good. Both of mm -hmm. these guys undefeated, currently sitting on table 24 in our fourth round. Yeah. Now, let's go to the table, I yeah, guess. Let's Without let's further let's ado, happen. let's take you guys to the table. All right, and here we see Jason on the left, 15 years old, playing for 10 years, started when he was five years old, like you just said, and Christoph on the right, who had a little bit of a, a longer trip here. But, um, th yeah, that's one of the things. Uh, even even if a tournament is in the UK, it's not always easy for UK players to get there, right? No, Liverpool's a bit out of the way. I know they went, <laughs> re I know they went really northern. Bit out of way. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit out of way. We just talked about those uh, English phrases that yeah. suggest one thing and mean something yeah, quite, yeah, quite yeah. different. Yeah, it's uh, difficult <coughs> to get to. It's, it's the more literal way of saying yes. it. Yeah, yeah. Bit out of way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm from the north. We don't really speak proper English. Yeah. So, so how do you feel about the fact that winter is coming? Oh, we love it. We love it up in the north. Yeah. Well, I, I now live down in the south where everyone constantly complains about it being cold. So, kind of... Is that a thing in England? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's, that's odd. To me, that is odd because it's it's quite warm in in the winter. I mean, it never gets warm in the summer. Uh, but but on the other hand, uh, you at least you don't have these super cold winters. Yeah. Well, it gets it gets um, it gets cold for like uh, sorry, it gets warm for about like four days in a single week, and then that's that's summer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Usually we define summer as a, a single twenty four hour block. <laughs> um, we uh, try and get ke- try and get it in around July. Sometimes it spills into August, if we're lucky. This year wasn't too bad though. Yeah. No, this year was actually pretty good. We got some pretty decent weather. Okay. There's a absolutely never seen before opening play from Jason. With uh, terraforming and union hanger, yeah, <coughs> and um, that's of course giving him the tools he needs. He's already got the C it's crush. W- it's more than the tools he needs. He's opened anti spell rooms as well. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, um, so, so um, no gadget, but no problem. No, he's got he's got um, a photon thre- thresher instead. Yeah, yeah, that's just as good. Uh, people are using photon thresher instead, so you can use reinforcements of the army. He's running three copies of those and yep. uh, two gold. And two silver gadgets. Yeah, so he's he's decided to run both the engines. It's so interesting. Yeah, so um, he's only playing one instant fusion, so he's cut down a little bit on that. Still, he's going to be struggling for extra deck space here. In fact, th- the thing with Jason, he, I, I I know Jason is that, and the the the, um, the thing with Jason, he always seems to just play like th- those two. They always make a deck and they play what they like, as yeah, long as yeah. it's and still <coughs> make it good. They don't mind about it being the the so called best deck in the format. Yeah, no, I just I mean like. They they do usually play what's considered the best. Oh okay. But sometimes they pick kind of strange technology cards. Like here we see main deck Chaos Trapfuls, which is actually really good in this format because if you if you Chaos Trap all a um, an ABC monster, then that just completely ruins their plans. But let's put you on the spot. Who main decks Ente Spell Fragrance? Well, it's, I, I think it's a great main deck in uh, ABCs. To be honest, it's the perfect chance to to just be <laughs> able to shut your opponent down straight away. I mean, that was a great discard with Tsukiyomi as well. And I think he drew into Union Hanger and uh, an Upstart Goblin, so he's probably going to play that Upstart <coughs> Goblin. We don't see it yet, but in just a second, there is the Upstart Goblin. You're, you're of course, correct, 100%. And he's, that, that back row, it, he's got... So he's going to have Buster, he's going to have Buster, Chaos Trapple, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty bad. I really <laughs> wonder how he managed to go 3-0 so far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here are my three Union monsters. And here's an ABC <laughs> Dragon Buster. That's what it sounds like when you fusion together. Um, I can confirm this, yes. Yep. <laughs> is it, that's the uh, Dragon Buster. So Kristoff's going to have a quick read of Dragon Buster. Just to double check what's going on there. He's not going to like what he's going to read. <laughs> no, it's not pleasant. So, yeah, that's scary. That's a scary board. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it just got so much scarier when he flipped that anti-spell fragrance. And is it all over already for Christoph? I mean, yeah. I mean, I Upstart is dead. So terraforming is dead. Yeah. Uh, Magical Abductor, not going to do much. Yeah. And as soon as this resolves, Jason playing to the utmost strength here. This uh, Loads of the really, really top-end players have been saying this to me. The moment that you feel you're ahead... Just detach the Dragon Buster. If, they, if they're going to kaiju you, that's going to be worse off for you. Right. Just detach. Get the plus one from the Union Hanger. And look at this now. He's going to be able to take it into next turn. He's going to have two Exceed monsters because um, the, the B Buster Drake can summon mm-hmm. itself back mm-hmm. from the Union the Union zone. Uh, well, Spell Trap Zone from being a Union. Um, no, it's, it's now the Union zone. The Union zone, exactly. Um, and, yeah, I mean... I but th- th- that's really good advice, honestly. Like, um, what's, what's not, not everybody might do? be thinking of this, but uh, like you said, um, yeah, just just go extra. for the detach, yeah, or, or for the unlink, whatever you yeah. want to call it. The unequip. It it reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> it reminds me of these these uh, except cannon. No, these these um, animated series where you you have these little trucks that all turn into one gigantic uh, thing. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, a couple of those. Yeah. So then the th- the cool thing of that as well is you get the effective union hanger. When when you yeah. unequip it. Yeah, you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, another plus one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, just the <laughs> easiest way to put this. All right. So what's Christoph gonna do? He's gonna He's call gonna it a day. <laughs> call it a day. Well <laughs> <laughs> congratulations. That was the correct decision in this. Wow. Talk about an explosive <laughs> opening. Uh I think we see why 
<laughs> he's undefeated currently. Yeah, well, if this is always his opening turn, then yes. And um, Daniel, it's always funny because you see like two extremes in the in the facial expressions of our volunteers, and it's either amusement in these situations or it's almost disgust. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I mean sometimes it's something in between, but most of the time it's either like, "Wow, that was amazing," and and they are really like laughing about it, or they are just like, "Man, man, I feel so bad for his opponent. I feel so very bad for him." Yeah. So that was all she wrote. Uh, it was a big opening from the ABC deck, backed up by an anti-spell fragrance, shutting Christoph Baumann down. And that is 1-0 for Chase and Little. Minimal yeah. effort, I would say. Yeah. So these guys both delving straight into their side decks here. And something that's super interesting from Jason um, is he's playing Union Scramble. I'm just going to bring that up for you. So that's another card that was released in the Kaiba Structure deck. Thank you to the judges there for bringing up the Union Scramble. Um, yeah, so it's it's a very strange one, but it absolutely can just come out of nowhere. If you play if you play Union Scramble, you can just bring back all of your Light Machine monsters that, that you used for the summon of Dragon Buster and just, just go in and attack with them. I think it's pretty good when your opponent really doesn't see that coming. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's like, yeah, okay, you're going to deal some damage, but I'm still going to see another turn, and, and you're just like, nope, you're not. Yep. How yeah, do you feel if if you sit if you put yourself in Christoph's shoes right there? Um, you you feel <laughs> yeah it must feel pretty awful to be down a game in such a fashion. I mean you you opened up and you just couldn't really do anything. I mean yeah. it didn't just have one. It didn't. It wasn't like it was just Buster anti spell. He had Buster anti spell and back row. Not yeah. just a back row, multiple back row as well. You know, for all you know, that could have been a reinforcement to the army or, or whatever. But you know that that was some meaningful back row as well. well. It was another life card, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just... And also, we agree, of course, with him not trying to drag this out any longer. And yeah, definitely. I mean, there's also no extra information that he could have gained, right? No. No, no, no. No, he he very much knew his opponent was playing ABCs at that point. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that was, that was a given at this point, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, do you sometimes get some more information about some tech card that the opponent is playing if you keep on... I, d I think that the game was over next turn. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have. He probably wouldn't have had to play any more cards. He'd have just switched yep. everything to attack mode and attacked with everything. Uh, here's everything I got. Can you handle it? Yeah. And it was a nope. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I can't. So Oops. just finishing off the side deck here. Yeah. Are they well within time. Yes. Jason looks very, I don't know, unamused is kind of the only way to put it. He's just kind of sat there, just like waiting. He doesn't really look happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks ready to play the next game. <laughs> <laughs> He's just kind of waiting. But our two volunteers, ready to go. Yeah. Well, what is Daniel doing? He's entertaining the table there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daniel's with about fairly well-known Irish judges. <laughs> fairly well-known Irish judges. Yeah. That's like, he's one of the best in the world if you only consider the one that only, the only the people that have one leg or something. It's like an absolute statement that gets then watered down by like three more additions to the statement. <laughs> <laughs> How else would you, s I, I don't know, anyway. Anyway. He's a legend. He's, he's a, a legend. legend among the judges. That's he's a legend. That's yeah. what he is. Okay, let's get back to uh, our Union Monsters. So let's see Kristoff's opening hand here, because he must be going first. Oh, you'd think so. I remember when we did that once, we said, he's definitely going first, oh, yeah. and then he didn't. That was a rude awakening. Yeah. yeah I was, I w at that point, I, I had to pinch myself, to be honest, yeah. to, to be sure that I'm still here in this room, um, not in this particular room, but in the room where we were doing the tournament, I was super surprised. It, it just didn't make any sense. Yeah. Ooh, that's a pretty good hand, actually. Yeah. He's got a Sky Iris, Odd Eyes Fusion, Mystical Space Typhoon, Performer Fall, Odd Eyes Unicorn, and Magic Spectre Raccoon, Boon Puku. And he's not wasting any time. No, I'm straight not out. Obviously. Straight out of the Moon Buku. Let's take a quick look at Jason's opening hand. He does have another ASF, an anti spell fragrance. 
Yeah. And um, Union it's, Scramble. He, he did draw to Union, Union Scramble. Scramble. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all that great, though, unless you manage to summon that first Buster Dragon. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's missing the hanger. Yes, he needs the hanger. The all important Union hanger. Yep. So, it's going to. Sky Arrow is the one copy of Kieran. <coughs> doing its thing. Yep. It's the one copy of Kieran with Sky Iris. This is shaping up to be the first loss of Jason here. <laughs> this uh, this particular and telegraphing the things to come. Yeah. Well, he's gonna he's gonna have a, a, a Kieran on board and a Space Typhoon in case. Um, in hanger. case his opponent he, has he the Union. He does draw into Hanger. Yeah. Uh, he's still going to be able to make a rank four play here, here though. If ju if Justin can make a rank, even just making a. Hmm. Yeah, because he's got the Sky Iris. I'm try. I can never, for the life of me, remember if Sky Iris protects the Farmer Power monsters. Uh, Odd Eyes monsters. Sorry, I thought it was just. So Christoph is left with an Odd Eyes fusion in his uh, hand. It's, it's all three magicians for Farmer Pals and Odd Eyes. All right, now it's up to Jason. Yep. So who did draw into a second Buster Drake? That's l less that than useful. ideal. Yeah, less than ideal, definitely. Yeah. So Kieran's going to be able to deal with any exceed plays that he decides to go with. It may be better off here, actually, not exceeding. But it's, it's hard to say, really. I mean. At this point, Jason knows whatever he summons is getting put back in the extra deck, so he needs to summon something that's got a some kind of quick effect. And what is that? I don't know. They're, they're Shaking they're your head. Yeah, there'd be nothing. <laughs> that you would can't really think of anything. That yeah. much use. Yeah, there's there's nothing of much use to be honest. Yeah, I, of course that's going to get Kieran's because. If that goes through, then the bad things are going to happen. Gear very Gigant simple. X. Yeah. Um, last time we really saw that card very often was actually in Italy, when, um, at, le at least what I re really remember, when, when it was making huge, huge waves. Um, it was a player from America, I can't come up with the name right now, who, who won the tournament with an extremely fast uh, machine deck. I'm um, going to figure that out for us in a second for you was guys. Was it Gear Gear? It was Gear Gear, yeah. It was definitely Gear Gear. I was just thinking of the player. Yeah, so immediately that Burn Booker gets bounced back to hand for the effect of Kieran. And Jason here is just kind of at a bit of a loss. I don't think he's going to lose outright next turn, though, because there's not much more that Kristoff can do. Um, but we'll, s we'll see. So he does have the anti-spell fragrance, but not much to do with it. And to be honest, Kristoff has Mystical Space Typhoon as well yeah. for the anti-spell fragrance. And it also kind of assembles his field already. I mean, yeah. it's it's very different when there's already two cards in the pendulum scales. Yep. But if at any point, yeah, t even if at any point um, Kristoff's scales get broken, he can flip over the anti-spell fragrance. It was Samuel Pedigo. Sam Pedigo. I do, re uh, do remember yeah. now. I, I was about to say Pedigo. Which, um, which event was it? Uh, there was a uh, Turin in uh, 2013 in December. Yeah, with Gear Gear. Or November 30th, December 1st. So yeah. just, uh, and he was playing Gear Gear. In a, in a deck that was uh, in a format that was uh, absolutely dominated by Dragon Rulers. Um, yeah. And he instead went with a different, different archetype. And then after that, yeah. Gear Gear was suddenly in the top three. Yeah, um, and at the European Championship, it was actually happened to be the most popular deck. So yeah, he was basically telegraphing what was what was what going was to come. happen. Yeah, yeah. Gear Gear was a very strong deck when Gear 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 was at three. Yeah, and it was all about rank fours. It was just yeah, not that not that that's ever stopped, but back <laughs> when it was kind of first happening. Yeah, back in my childhood, man, it was all about those rank fours. Y you mean <laughs> like yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think Jason's at a bit of a loss here. He doesn't really know <laughs> what to do. I don't think he's at a bit of a loss. Yeah.
we just it's heard. Um, yeah, uh, don't don't mind to cut you off, but um, just uh, because somebody was like, "Hey, this is uh, this is something in the coverage, in the written coverage that you might want to take a look at." We of course also do have a written coverage this weekend, guys. So you can uh, check out more player profiles, more deck features, things like that on our written coverage. The URL has changed, which already led to some confusion. It is now coverage dot yugioh-card.com. So yugioh-card.com, you, you may easily remember because that is printed on every single booster pack that's ever been released. That is, of course, the, the, the official page of the trading card game, yugioh-card.com. And the coverage is now coverage.yugioh-card.com. Very yeah. easy. Yep. A, lot, a lot easier than it's the old simple. URL. Yeah. Yeah, it's tcg.konami-europe.com slash coverage. Yeah. <laughs> and I only know that because I words. work with it quite a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Quite a bit. <laughs> I honestly, c I wouldn't have been able to tell you the URL of the old <laughs> coverage site. All right. Like, I remember this one. but So Christoph now has a pretty nice setup going. Oh, he just blind MST'd the Union Scramble. That's actually really good for Jason. Yeah, because his anti-spell fragrance might now be active. Uh, might now be really useful, yeah. And he actually did also draw into Vanity's Emptiness. Uh, Jason. Mm, nuts. But normally that card is only really good when you're assembling your field and then yeah. passing play and your opponent is trying to do the same. Yeah. Uh, I in this scenario that we have right here that unfolded in front of our eyes, it's a bit different because Christoph already has assembled his field. Yeah. It's one of the worst situations to draw on Vanity's Emptiness, isn't it? Yeah, because you just can't, you can't really do much with it at that point. So yeah, he's going to tornado away that... Um, a assault call, which is a bit troubling. <laughs> a bit, a bit, a bit troubling, yeah, because he's just going to be unable to create that ABC Buster Dragon. But yeah, Kristoff's really come back out the gates here on this on this second match. This is exactly what um, the Pendulum deck is supposed to do: get that Sky Iris down slowly but surely, gain more advantage through your Pendulum summons, Pendulum summoning back the Magic Specter monsters. Using those trap cards, yeah. so now Jason uh, just flips over everything. He's like, "Here's my floodgate army." Yeah, <laughs> opening up himself for a for a nice two for one actually. Yeah, because if he has an MST. Yeah. But yeah, no, no reason to feel that. Yeah, but I if Jason I has... I guess, quite honestly, the ideal play would have been to only flip Anti-Spell Fragrance, wait for it to resolve, and then in a new chain, flip Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah. Because if if your opponent uh, chains, of course, then Vanity's Emptiness would be uh, would be destroyed. Yeah. And in, in if he just flips both of them at the same time. Just a, just a minor thing, of course. Yeah. Uh, but it might actually make a difference in, in yeah. some close matches. Yeah. At this point, the... Kristoff is pretty open to Jason just having a big monster. And when I say big, I mean just like, even just an A assault core at this point would would stop him off because he can't he can't summon anything at that point. So Unless you think we're going into um, a very... Simplified game state. Yes, that was exactly what was on my mind. Yeah, simplified game state time. Like you read my mind right there. Yeah. And one could think we've been working together before. I know. So there's a the Skyris. So that's a pretty scary maneuver here to, to play that Sky Iris effect on your Pendulum Zone because um, he's got anti-spell fragments. <laughs> I mean, he's uh, he's got to, I guess, search for some kind of monster effect out, but I don't I don't know if there is one to uh, anti-spell fragments. What's he playing? Ah, of course, it's New German. <laughs> I kept trying to read his... Well, you yeah, <laughs> trying to make sense of them. Ah, yes, Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon. So Odd Eyes Mirage Dragon, it's just added to his hand here. Mm. Then it hits the field, of course. Yeah. So he just uh, he's, he's just going in here, poking a little bit. Yeah. So I guess it it just it kind of comes down to now whether Jason wants to take that risk of summoning the Bee Buster trick. Yeah, but what's the alternative? Yeah, uh, th there isn't one really. Yeah. He's got to he's got to summon that and just hope that his opponent doesn't have anything bigger. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. The, the unicorn the unicorn may cause issues though, because because he's got an odd eyes monster on the field. Yeah. 
now because if um, if an odd eyes monster battles while put the the unicorns there, you can <coughs> target a performer power monster. But oh, I guess he hasn't got any performer pals. Jason did draw into a gold gadget, which is not all that helpful when there's a vanity's emptiness face up on the field. No. Oh, actually, yeah, the, the other effect of Union Scramble. You can banish it from the graveyard to target one of your uh, light machine. It's, it's either a light union monster, but something. You can target the ABCs, basically. And he, he was able to get back the um, the A there. So now he's got the Assault Core and the Buster Dragon, the Gold Gadget, and the Assault Core just hit the field. Mm, how is Christoph yep. going to respond? He's got a set terraforming. Not going to do much. Nope. And then odd ice fusion. Also not going to do much. So we might actually see a straight up beatdown match. Just like in the good old days. All right. I think that's probably going to be it for Jason because nothing else that he can do with a Buster Dragon and a Gold Gadget in hand. He's not going to get rid of his own Vanity's Emptiness, um, at least not so far. He needs some help from his opponent. And uh, Christoph needs something to attack over the Assault Core, which would also allow him to get rid of that Vanity's Emptiness. Yeah. He does have a Terraforming. And where does he go from here with the Terraforming? I don't think there's... M Many places to go here because he he's under spell Just fragrance. Just another sky iris. Yeah, and he's under spell fragrance. As it, this is a super simple game state right now. He's just waiting for an MST or a twin twisters. All right. Now he's. On the attack again, or at least it looks a little bit like he's setting up something, but oops. Yeah, it does. Well, actually, yeah, that's that's it. He's He's got the out here. He can use the unicorn to pump uh, the Odd-Eyes Mirage Dragon so he can get over the A. <coughs> Is but that his one out or one of the few outs? Uh, one of the few outs. Right. That's one of the few outs, but it, it was already on the field, so. Yeah. So here he goes. And it's probably going to, now he's going to be gotten rid of the Vanity's Emptiness, of course, and that is big, big news for Christoph. Well, it's big news for Jason, too, to be fair, because he's he's now unrestricted from Emptiness. Emptiness wasn't the thing stopping Christoph ever. It was just the uh, the anti-spell fragrance. Yeah. Because he, he, he broke his own scale anyway. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think Jason's going to be able to come back. Oh, right. I kind of forgot about the fact that he doesn't have these scales assembled. <laughs> so it's, it's when you've seen so many matches and you just assume that the player always has that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. But he doesn't have the scales right now. Uh, can you get them? Sky Iris? No. No, because he, he, he can't because of spell. Yeah, so... He yeah. can't play scales at all. Nothing at all, yeah. That's odd. Odd eyes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, <laughs> okay, he's probably going to try and tribute summon that um, that pendulum dragon to try and make it the biggest monster on the field. We'll see. But he already summoned this turn. Yeah, on a run now. Yeah, ah, he's just investing. He's, he's investing spoiling in the, future. the things to come. He's investing in the future. Ah, okay, or it could be for that. That's far more useful. So he's playing sort of fusion. <laughs> um, yeah, that's already been face down for one many, or two many turns. turns. Yeah. yeah, so he gets to summon. Um, the pendulum, pendulum dragon. No, that's not what I meant to say at all. The I know exactly what it looks like, and I can't remember the name of it. Vortex. That's the one. As soon as I saw the picture, I remembered the name. <laughs> Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon. Yeah, which uh, gives him gives him some negates as well if his opponent tries to do things. And a very big beat yeah, stick. Big beat stick. Three thousand death. Still. Two thousand five hundred yeah. attack. Still, if we see. The ABC Dragon Burst to get out somewhere, then he could come back here. It's not looking likely with this Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon being on the field. What is the card that he needs right now? I mean, definitely not a Union Hanger with that anti spell fragrance. Line. Yeah, definitely not a Union Hanger. Like um, that would be the worst time. Yeah, I think, he's, I think his own anti spell fragrance is stopping him from having a top deck out here.
because the odd eyes vortex dragon is um is is able to stop monster effects as well so even that gold gadget is not really going to be able to make a play with that so it's destiny draw time for jason yeah let's see what he has you already got the Buster Drake and the Golden uh, Yes. Oh, okay. He's going to be able to stay alive now. <laughs> oh, no, he's not because of um, Vortex anyway. Well, it depends if if Kristoff uh, summons another monster. Yeah. Because I think Crush, I think Crush Wyvern's defense is pretty big, actually. Yeah, it's around... Two th yeah, 2,000. <laughs> around 2,000. And by around, you mean exactly. Yeah. So we could see a rank 4 player here. Could be um, the... Oh, okay, full operative. Yeah, that works too. I was going to say the trapeze magician, but yeah, papal operative will work. That that will flip it up and mm. make it lose attack points and stuff. So, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be all she wrote, I think. Yeah, Jason very quickly uh, figuring out there that the maths is not going to add up. Yep, and with just 600 life points remaining, that is yeah. not enough, of course, to, to hang in there. Whew, wow, they, that was quite a long game. It was, yeah. Considering how how much kind of big lock cards got out there, that was that was quite a long game. But both players, you know, with the first game being so short. Yeah, it's, it's a nice change of pace for us. So a good setup for Christoph at the beginning of the game. Um, Jason couldn't really fight it back. I mean, he only had ways to, to further stop Krista from going off. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's he didn't really have his own engine. His own engine cards kind of betrayed him there. Whereas Kristoff had everything he really needed. Yeah, so he couldn't really assemble a field himself. No. And then eventually... Um, yeah, I think if at any point during that game... That Jason would have been able to actually assemble the Buster, dra the Buster Dragon. Might have made Th all the difference. Yeah, that would have made a complete difference. So that second game alone has taken something like 20 minutes. Yeah, so... <laughs> so uh, because I started like at the beginning of the second game. Uh, the I didn't stop... Uh, when we started the match, so uh, but the first game was over relatively quickly. Yeah. So I would estimate we have like between ten and l twelve, fifteen minutes, um, roughly, on on the clock left for the round. Roughly ten, I would say. So do you already side for um, the end of match procedure, or do you still stick with your your best forty cards basically? No, I think you you. I don't think there's really end any end of match procedure cards here. I think uh, Jason honestly is going to have more trouble with end of match procedure because of the um, chaos trap pulls that he plays. Because obviously they cost quite a lot. Yeah, a lot of monies. Cost a lot of monies those <laughs> chaos trap pulls. But uh, he's not going to side them out regardless. No, I think they're too important. Well, not not in this matchup so much. To be fair, um, pro probably will side those out for, for something a little more relevant, like twin twisters or a dark hole maybe. No, no, Dark Hole, I'm, I'm thinking of the other Pendulum deck. No, Dark Hole's awful against <laughs> Magic Spectres. They all literally say on them, you can't do Dark Hole. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't really think too much more. I mean, Flying Sea, possibly. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, again, another possible good card against this matchup. It shouldn't it be easy to to take something against ABC? I'm not, I'm not saying there's like a million cards, um, but shouldn't there be something? Um, yeah, for for Christoph, yeah, it's um, it's just a shame that his deck is in German. I can't read most of his side deck. Actually, no, it's most of his side decks in English. I just don't know what this one is. Uh, Ghost Ogre and Winter Cherries. Okay. Oh, uh, wi Winter. Is it Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit or uh, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries? Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. Okay, yeah, so that's that's a pretty good side against uh, against ABCs. Yeah, why is nobody main decking this? I don't know, because I was saying that everyone should be main decking it. <laughs> <laughs> Every single person who's asked me about, oh, how do you feel about Ghost, Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries? I said, yes, you should be main decking it. Uh, so that's one of those comments. Uh, it's going to open a, a gateway to the talk. 
to the dark world in the internet where everybody's going to like come through and then scream at you for making such a comment. Probably. You're going to like, whoa, why is he thinking? This is why he's doing commentary. This is why he's working for Konami rather than playing. <laughs> it's like, just some suggestions for you guys. You, you can, of course, go crazy. Yeah, yeah feel free. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think it. I think it's a bit risky. It's a little bit risky. I'm not gonna lie, but you gotta, you know, play play big. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the question. Like, why why don't you play something like a system down in the main deck if if you know there's gonna be S system down is only good against ABCs, whereas uh, Winter Cherries is good against ABCs, Blue Eyes, BA. If you end up seeing BA, uh, Light Swans as well. If you end yeah. up desperately needing like. We're, we're clutching at straws, but if you end up having to use it against one of the, like, let's say Castell or something, I don't know, mm. the, for Light Swans, it's at least mildly relevant. So Jason did side into a stun deck, um, <laughs> sided out all the ABC cards, it looks like. Yeah, so, oh, but Christoph opened, uh, opened the Twin Twisters. Yeah, so the anti spell fragrance this time not going to be super match deciding, I guess. Although yeah. there's a he just discarded Winds Cherries as well, which seems a little strange. So the, the Solemn Strike is not going to do much, of that's course. That's the good thing for um, for Jason here, for that Twin Twisters to get destroyed by his opponent's Twin Twisters. Because, well, kind of. It depends. It depends yeah, where I'm, I'm thinking about goes. that. I mean, depends where Christoph's turn goes. Book of, Book of Eclipse and Solemn Strike, they are, they are not like great protection or anything like that. Well, stri Strike's going to be big. Okay, yeah. Strike's going to be big. Stri if he would have hit the strike, that would have been even even worse, definitely. All right. So there we see the, the very famous minus nine. Yeah. He's going to look at the cards. See, this is important. Ooh, that is, is he playing three Skyris? Um, I thought he did. Yeah, yeah three. He, okay. He I, did, I saw two banished. That implies the third one is still left in deck. Yeah, he don't want to play without that card. No. Okay, so so far so good for Christoph. Yeah. He's got a few more cards in hand. Yeah. I think J Jason's got a bit of a bad hand here because he's got strike and he's got Maxi. That yeah, you want to strike the, the summon, not Maxi it. <laughs> but at the same time, he really needs to draw some cards. Whereas Christoph isn't necessarily in the best position in the world. He can't really go too far with this hand. It's interesting because it's kind of good for him. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, because otherwise he's just gonna get a massive strike, and then yeah, and then he's gonna get really sad. Okay, so he's gonna play the play one more MST. That's, I, okay, what a shot! <laughs> it's obviously a perfect play. <laughs> yeah, this is how you do it. Yeah, you shut down the solemn strike. Yeah, so there's only a book of eclipse left. Yeah, and a maxi in Jason's hand. Mm -hmm. this what's, what's worse, that was actually for the benefit of magical abductor. It wasn't actually for the MST at all. <laughs> yeah, he just he just wanted to test the waters and get a spell card activation. In. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what an activation it was. I mean, yeah, exactly. now, now Jason is basically stripped of his entire back row almost. This yeah. is just the Book of Eclipse left. Yeah, Bumbuku going to get itself. It's just for the scale. Yeah, so he's going to play Max C now. I think Jason's here. He's trying to decide when to play this Book of Eclipse that he's got. I don't think Book of Eclipse is all that good against this deck. It, like in this scenario so far it doesn't really look like it no it's good against kind of you know stuff like Zolkin where you need to deal with Zolkin in, a, in an efficient manner but not that great against the Magic Spectres so Christoph where does he go from here Christoph so he's able to he, I think he's just got to kind of Summon as many monsters as he can, do as much damage as he can, and hope that Jason. So Jason's, draw into Jason's, only, Jason's only going to get one draw from this, from from the pen, pendulum summon. Yeah. So I don't know if Christoph want like Christoph shouldn't really start exceed summoning. 
going then, any then going again, any crazier than he has. So. Yeah. Then again, Kristoff decided to not even pendulum summon. Uh, to be fair, yeah, d he didn't really have all that much. To yeah, he just summon. passes play. So the max C was hmm. a minus one, basically. Yeah. Might not be the worst decision. No. Jason draws. Oh, another into. face down. Yeah. And that that's just basically it. He doesn't have any more cards in hand because the yeah. card in uh, his hand was a max C. He drew anti spell fragrance. Anti spell fragrance. Yeah, but right now it's not that good. No, not at all. I mean, <coughs> it might have sounded like there was a question mark at the end of the sentence, but no, not at all. It's I, not I think I made an exclamation mark. Yeah, it's, it's just not right. Yeah, not so really sure. good there. because now he can freely uh, pendulum summon. Yeah, yeah, he can just go ahead pendulum summon. If he, you know, if somehow he'd have broke his own scales and then the anti spell fragrance would have come down, then you know that'd have been that'd have been okay, but. Yeah. Yeah, what a. That was just a really big hit on Solemn Strike from that MST. Yeah, we, we already got some some players <laughs> claiming that the that the player on the table was uh, watching the stream, so he knew where the card was. <laughs> but that's not what's happening. <laughs> Apart from the fact that we can see both of his hands half the time, yeah. Uh, there are also a couple the, of people yeah. standing around him that yeah. would all have something to say if he starts randomly watching the stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is a big field. Yeah, suddenly bad things are happening for Jason here. Kristoff really showing what he's got. I mean, Book of Eclipse is gonna save him, <laughs> but yeah, okay. His opponent's gonna get like <laughs> plus, plus Su four. such a good card. Yeah, plus five even from from the because the Book of Eclipse as well. <laughs> it's just oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, he's activating it. Yeah. Ooh, that hurts. It just hurts. It's it's fun because you're playing a card that prevents you from taking a, a ton of damage. And at the same time, you yeah. feel really, really bad about yeah. it. See, Wobber could have been better here. Wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, here, no doubt. It's definitely better to not take any damage and not have his opponent, have your opponent draw a million cards. Yeah. Compared to... Well, the opposite. Uh, not take any damage and your opponent drawing four cards. So I think they're deciding here because he needed to allow him to target with Pendulum Sorcerer. So he's saving the Book of Eclipse. It's quite interesting. Yeah, so he's, again, he's broken his own scales here. Hmm. I mean, it's not like Jason can top uh, Union Hanger and yeah, please no, no, that is of course true. Yeah, but but still, um, still interesting, still debatable. Yeah. Nobody seems to be a fan of anti-spell fragrance. No. Why is that? It's a pretty strong card. Pretty strong smell. Yeah. The fragrance. Yeah doesn't seem to be a lovely smell. No, that's why it stops all the spells. Pretty <laughs> strong, pretty strong spell. Okay. A spell smell. The smell the, the spell smell it. So <laughs> the attacks have connected. Jason is left with just 2000 life points. Yeah. Uh, because he didn't activate his uh, book of eclipse, of course. Yeah. And uh, Christoph might now be performing some some more ex exceed summons in the the main phase too. Maybe. And what will you be going for here? Castell. Castell away the anti-spell fragrance. Sounds fair, yeah. I'm just thinking if there's anything else that is really good, but it sounds... Castelling the anti-spell fragrance pretty is good. Probably, probably the way to go. If not, then just not. <laughs> just not exceed summoning would, would work too. So we, we also might be getting ever closer to the timeout now. Yeah. I got 33 minutes on my watch, and I started counting um, at the start of game two. So I kind of missed game one, at least most of it. Oh, my crystal ball's working. <laughs> <laughs> so since uh, that game one took at least five minutes, we're shuffling and everything. Yeah. Any minute now, we're going to be... Um, we're going to be in the timeout, I think. So that's the Book of Eclipse. Yeah, definitely better now when your opponent is only drawing two cards, but 
Still, you took all the damage. Yeah, still far from ideal. Far from ideal. Don't understand. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you have to keep your material. And then, yeah, one, one counter on Abductor. <laughs> Never forget that. Doesn't matter, yeah. how, doesn't matter how strong that anti-spell fragrance is, Abductor's always going to smell them. She's like, Book of Eclipse? I got a, I got a counter. <laughs> yeah, good for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah so good, for, good for Chasen that he stays in the game, but... Uh, There's time? There is time, but Christoph is currently very, very far ahead with uh, another old ice unicorn, yep. reddish horse, ghost reaper, and winter cherries. Two copies of it. <laughs> Not going to attack much with that. And a performer power pendulum sor sorcerer. Yeah, so he's going to be able to send that away, do tons of pendulum summons. Oh, it's been time for a while. No, uh, it was just like they, they put down the T and then right away they were passing, I think. It's more like a... Not really. Oh, because they're already in the second turn and timeout? Yeah, oh, I don't know. Well, we can ask our judges after to clarify yeah. exactly uh, what turns they're going to do. Well, in any case, I mean, Christoph is far, far ahead. Yeah. Um, that's insert burning abyss choke now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> insert burning abyss choke. It doesn't look like, like Jason is going to muster up a lot of offense here. No. Yeah, like even if uh, yes. Christoph wasn't able to finish things right here, and th this is, spoiler alert, what's going to happen. That's Papalopchev again. And that's going to take Maxi all the way down There's to zero. There's the attack, yes. Zero, and that's a good that game. And that's the first loss for Chase and Little against Christoph Baumann.